Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. American Comics. The Joker is summoned at the beginning, the Avengers Alliance collapses. Chapter 11. Penguin nodded. Then he smiled and said to Bullseye, Sir, everyone is here to have fun, so why make everyone so unhappy? Bullseye narrowed his eyes slightly, looked at Penguin and said, My boss has taken a fancy to the way your store operates, and wants you to submit to us, how about it? The Penguin shook his head, You don't even tell me who your boss is, and you just want to make me submit to him. Bullseye looked at the crowd who were still watching. This is not a place for conversation, do you have a quiet place here? Definitely there is. Penguin was kind, nodded and said to the man in suit who was robbing Bullseye of a woman, all your consumption here today is free. The penguin patted the man in the suit on the arm, and then said to Bullseye, come with me, I have a reception room on the sixth floor, let's go there and talk. After speaking, Penguin walked in front, followed by four bodyguards. Bullseye saw this and quickly followed. Come in with me, you guys stay here. The penguin glanced at Bullseye, and then instructed the bodyguard at the door. The bodyguards nodded, and the horse stood outside the door, while the Bullseye followed the penguin in. As soon as the door was closed, Bullseye sat down on the sofa unceremoniously, and then said carelessly, I'll get straight to the point. I believe you, boss, must be a smart person. The penguin didn't speak, and sat on the sofa opposite Bullseye. The umbrella in his hand was placed on the sofa, and the handle of the umbrella was aimed at Bullseye. Penguin nodded with a smile. It is undeniable that I do consider myself a smart person. But even if your boss wants me to submit to you, at least let me see your sincerity, right? Penguin changed to a more comfortable sitting position, then leaned on the sofa and spoke. Bullseye didn't speak, he was just a greedy killer, he didn't understand these twists and turns. Seeing Bullseye not opening his mouth, the penguin changed his words. So, can I talk to your boss? Bullseye thought for a while, then took out his mobile phone and dialed Jin Bing's phone number. Bullseye, what did the owner of that nightclub say? Have you decided to submit to me? Not yet, he said he wanted to talk to you. Jin Bin froze for a moment, then asked, is he beside you now? Exist. You give him the phone. Bullseye hands the phone to Penguin. The boss asked you to answer the phone. Penguin nodded and took the phone from Bullseye. I heard you wanted to talk to me. On the other end of the phone, a voice full of anger came. Yes, before we talk, who are you? Jin Bin on the other side laughed out loud, as if he had heard a big joke. Who am I? This is the funniest joke I've heard this year. You don't know who I am. Didn't you know before you opened the store, who owns the whole hell's kitchen? Hearing this, the penguin pretended to be stunned for a moment. Then he hurriedly said, could it be that you are Jin Bin? Jin Bing on the opposite side showed a smile on his face, otherwise. The penguin quickly shook his head, and then asked cautiously, so boss Jin Bin, do you want me to submit to you? Yes, my subordinates heard that you are very good at running nightclubs and other places. I happen to have the most of these things in New York. I want you to help me manage these properties under my name. Then can I make a request? Requirement. Jin Bin's voice sank, and then he said again, tell me what is the request first. The penguin smiled, actually, it's not a big request. Since boss Jin Bin asked me to help you manage the property under your name, then I want 5% of the value created by my management of your property. 5%. Are you a little too greedy? He has hundreds of clubs all over New York. The penguin smiled and said, Boss Jin Bing, these also include training fees. It is not a coincidence that my, Iceberg Corridor, can be successful in just a few days. I can pay Golden Boss, the people under you can study and graduate in a year at most. I only want 5% of the value I create for you in a year. No problem, Jin said without any hesitation. Then Jin Bin Boss, we have a happy cooperation. After the two finished talking, Jin Bing took the initiative to hang up the phone. Penguin sees Kim and hangs up, returning the phone to Bullseye. Since we are all boss Jin Bing's subordinates now, how about I give you all the expenses you pay for playing with me from now on? While the penguin was speaking, he wanted to go over and put his arm around Bullseye's shoulder. But Bullseye avoided Penguin's hand sideways, and then said coldly, no need, I'm not Jin Bin's subordinate, I just have some interests with him. Don't be like this, 
It doesn't matter if you don't, the meeting is fate, as long as you come here to play in the future, how about all the consumption will be charged to my account. Bullseye didn't speak, stood up and walked out. Do your thing and don't get my way. Bullseye glanced back at Penguin before walking out the door. Penguin nodded towards Bullseye with a smile on his face. Don't worry, I will definitely not hit your mind. Bullseye left. Seeing that the bullseye at the door disappeared, Penguin's smile disappeared instantly. Jin Bin. Bullseye. I didn't expect that I had only opened the store for a few days, and you two core figures in Hell's Kitchen couldn't wait to come to the door. Penguin's voice was cold. Make good money. After one year, all those bars will be mine. At that time, all the money you make will be mine too. On the sofa, two documents appeared at some point. The above names are Jin Bin and Bullseye. Kim has a wife and children. Vanessa and Richard. Maybe these two weaknesses can be exploited later. Penguin touched his chin, and then looked at another file. Bullseye, once spent a year in a Mexican prison, and was arrested on charges of burning the prison after he was released. What's even more bizarre is that his father was left in the prison and burned alive, withdrawing a bullseye. Compared with Jin Bing, the underworld leader, Bullseye has too much information. The information in Penguin's hands included almost all of Bullseye's experiences. Penguin then looked down. Bullseye once entered the US security agency and had conflicts with the Punisher when he was in Africa. This Bullseye is really an interesting person. Putting down the information in his hand, Penguin shook his head helplessly. Now he can use too few people. And being able to sit on this throne must be a smart person, so now Penguin can only hide by Jin Bin like he used to in Gotham. When the time comes, give the gold and kill it. As for Bullseye. Bullseye's weaknesses are simply too many. Just a brief meeting, Penguin analyzed Bullseye's character. Love of money, and jealous love of money. This may be related to Bullseye's childhood experience. Moreover, he set the fire and burned his father who was in prison to death. Bullseye may have some kind of mental illness, as long as he understands these two points, Bullseye will completely become a pawn that can be manipulated. Thinking of this, Penguin couldn't help but put down the information in his hand, and then let out bursts of weird laughter. On the other side, after putting down the phone, Jin Bing panted heavily, and his muscles kept shaking, which was obviously due to anger. 5% profit, this penguin is really arrogant. He dares to ask me for 5% profit if he doesn't do anything. I'll see if I dare to give it to you. Do you dare to take it? At this time, a woman wearing slippers sat beside Jin Bing's bed. Vanessa, are you still awake? Seeing his wife, Jin Bing's voice suddenly became gentle, and he gently stroked Vanessa's smooth long hair and asked. Vanessa shook her head. I'm not sleepy now. A few days ago, Richard was scolded by the teacher for beating other children at school. Today, their teachers called me. It's normal for children to play and fight. Kim snapped a haha, then shook her head. Then, Jin Bing quickly changed the subject. It's getting late, go to bed early. Okay, let's see how anxious you are. A month passed quickly. The turmoil in New York seems to have calmed down. During this month, nothing seemed to happen, and a lot of things seemed to happen. Natasha Romanoff finally woke up from a coma after seven days in a coma. There were countless places scratched by shrapnel on his body, five ribs were broken, and his head was also blown into a severe concussion. It is also because of this incident that Joker got the kill order of Nick Fury and Hawkeye. Hawkeye roams the streets of New York almost every day to try his luck when he has no mission. If he can meet Joker, he will definitely kill him without any hesitation. But because Joker has the protection of Hydra, every time Joker can avoid Hawkeye accurately. Normally, Joker doesn't mind playing with Hawkeye, but he's planning a big event that could shock the entire United States recently. At such a critical juncture, there can be no mistakes at all. And Penguin's outstanding business ability also successfully made Penguin enter the inner circle of Jinbin. At the same time, Penguin finally had a deeper understanding of Jinbing's power. Jin Bin has many industries in New York, but most of them are entertainment venues such as nightclubs, nightclubs and bars. The Penguin also finally understood why Jin He sent his capable general, Bullseye, to find him as soon as he learned that he had the ability to operate. After all, without Penguin, he would lose millions of dollars every day. 
Penguin also gradually began to form his own team in the dark. If the Penguin wants to replace Jin Bin, it is not enough to kill Jin Bin alone, and he must have enough hard power. And the first batch of people in this team were those who were sent by Jin Bing to learn how to run a nightclub with Penguin. After all, in this world, there is no one who cannot be moved by bright dollars. The money that Jin Bing gives to these people every year is only a few hundred thousand dollars, and it is definitely impossible for them to give Jin Bing their lives. And the Penguin directly promised to give these people two million dollars a year. It was three times the salary that Jin Bing gave. A famous philosopher once said that as long as there is 100% profit, people can betray God. But now, this is already a 200% profit, even including the original salary at Jinbin, it is 300%. With so much money, even if Penguin asked them to sell all their souls to Satan, they would definitely have no hesitation. Not to mention betraying a little Jin Bing. Iceberg Promenade, Nightclub. Penguin is dancing a gentleman with a young girl. Beside him were four bodyguards. After dancing the song, the penguin found an empty booth and sat down, poured himself a glass of Remy Martin, worth several thousand USD, and looked at the bodyguards around him. Do any of you know when Bullseye is coming back? The penguin hasn't seen Bullseye since the last time Bullseye came to the bar. This is not acceptable, Bullseye is a very important part of Penguin's plan to capture the underground emperor of New York. Without Bullseye, the entire plan would not be possible. Boss, Bullseye has come to the bar and is currently drinking on the booth on the second floor. Yeah, the penguin immediately stood up excitedly, but the next moment the penguin seemed to think of something, and then sat down again. Give me the surveillance camera on the second floor. A bodyguard handed over a tablet, and penguin took it and began to look at it. After watching for a while, the penguin put the tablet on the table, then turned his head and continued to ask, do you know where Bullseye has been in this month? One of the bodyguards nodded. According to Jin Bing's undercover agent, Bullseye has been locked in prison for a month, and the reason why he came here to drink is because Jin Bing found another killer during this month. I heard that they also hang out in Hell's Kitchen, and their name seems to be Erica. The bodyguard paused, and then continued, our people also investigated that Erica's boyfriend is also in Hell's Kitchen. His name is Matt Murdock. He is a blind man. He runs a family in Hell's Kitchen. Law firm. A law firm for the blind. Penguin smiled mockingly. A blind man opens a law firm. Isn't this a joke? Yes, that's the name of Matt Murdock's law firm. The penguin nodded, and then said to a bodyguard beside him, it's okay for you to investigate that law firm. Maybe we can rely on Matt to make Bullseye work for us. The bodyguard nodded and left to make arrangements for Penguin. The Penguin stood up, straightened his tie, and walked towards the second floor with Penguin-like steps while holding an umbrella. Let's go. Go to the second floor and meet Bullseye and see if we can get some words out of his mouth. After all, Bullseye is my most important friend. On the second floor, Bullseye of at the moment completely ignored the two women sitting beside him, and just drank glasses of mulled wine on the table. After finishing his drink from the bottle, Bullseye threw the glass on the ground with a flick of his hand. There was only a crisp sound of, bang, from the wine glass, and Bullseye was like a drunkard, yelling at the woman beside him, where's the wine? Keep filling me up. The two women were about to pour the wine, but the penguin walked in at this moment and held the hand that was about to pour the wine. Brother Bullseye, it's no fun drinking alone here. The penguin said looking at the drunken Bullseye but he couldn't believe that Bullseye was really drunk. A killer like Bullseye who walks on the steel wire all year round will really die if he doesn't pay attention. After all, Bullseye has killed too many people, and too many enemies. Sure enough, when he saw the penguin coming in, Bullseye's eyes suddenly became brighter, and the hazy alcoholism in his eyes had long since disappeared. Seeing this, Penguin was secretly happy. He already knew what Bullseye was here for today. In Jin Bing's gang, some people are saying that although Penguin doesn't make much money, he is very generous. The money Penguin gave to his brothers was several times that of Jin Bin. And Penguin hasn't shown his true colors yet. The current image of the Penguin among Jin Bing's gangsters is that of a somewhat greedy, but generous, and loyal businessman. Now Bullseye is holding a grudge against Kim for finding Erica while he was in prison, and, accidentally, let Bullseye hear it when Penguin, 
unintentionally, let a gangster advertise his generosity. Combined with the money-greedy attribute of bullseye, it is precisely because of the above points that bullseye will appear in the iceberg corridor today. You, go and bring me some boxes of XO to my office, brother bullseye is in a bad mood today, I'll accompany him to get drunk. Yes, boss. Bullseye half pushed and half yielded followed Penguin to the office on the top floor. The two sat opposite each other on the round table, and boxes of Remy Martins were moved in by the Penguin as if they didn't want money. Bullseye counted his fingers secretly, and then he was speechless in his heart. This is already equivalent to the total profit of the iceberg corridor for one day. Thinking of this, Bullseye actually felt a little moved. Although I don't know why you came to my place to get drunk, but since I saw it, I can't pretend that I didn't see it. Let me toast you first. After speaking, Penguin took a deep breath, and then directly blew on a bottle of wine. Not to be outdone, Bullseye picked up a bottle of wine and drank it. The two of you came and went, and the bottles of wine on the table quickly disappeared. Empty wine bottles appeared one after another on the ground. No matter how good Bullseye's drinking capacity was, he couldn't stand such heavy drinking, so after three rounds of drinking, Bullseye began to tongue out. Brother, I only went in for a month, and that Jin Bing found another killer. Bullseye hiccuped, ignored the penguin, and continued, I've already found out the name of the person who took my place. I was thinking about whether to kill that fool, but now I've figured it out. Don't kill. I heard from Jin Bing's brothers that the money you give is much more than Jin Bing, and I want to follow you now. After saying these words, Bullseye slipped and fell under the seat. Penguin didn't answer, and also fell headfirst on the table. Not long after, four bodyguards walked in. The muscles on Bullseye's body tensed instantly, and at some point four playing cards appeared in his hand. Oh my god, why did the boss and Bullseye drink so much? This is comparable to the income of our nightclub in a day. Another bodyguard said, Okay, it's not easy for Bullseye, otherwise I wouldn't have come to drink with the boss. There are still a few rooms below, let's send them to the room first. After hearing their words, the poker in Bullseye's hand disappeared, and the tense muscles in his body relaxed. The other two bodyguards nodded, and then each helped one up and walked down. After the bodyguard placed the bullseye, he hurried back to the top floor. At the moment's penguin's eyes are still half drunk. As the bullseye installed, seeing the bodyguard coming in, the penguin asked. The bodyguard nodded. Bullseye slept very hard. HMPH, how is it possible? The penguin gave a cold snort of disdain, and then explained, Bullseye is a gold medal killer under Jin Bin. This kind of person will stay absolutely awake no matter what the situation is. He was absolutely faking just now. As he said that, Penguin touched his chin again, but it's okay, at least I know the purpose of Bullseye's visit this time. The purpose of Bullseye's visit this time is simple. Maybe it was because my family was too poor when I was a child, so Bullseye was very greedy for money. Jin Bin couldn't satisfy Bullseye's appetite anymore, and there was an Erica variable, so Bullseye simply wanted to come directly to do things with Penguin. Do you have any sign of Erica now? Erica is at home with her boyfriend right now. A bodyguard said quickly. Penguin nodded, lowered his head and began to think. Erica is just working for Jin Bin now, so the relationship between Erica and Jin Bin is not solid now. So Erica is something that the current Penguin can fight for. In addition to owning the gang wealth of the entire New York, Jin Bin also has great hard power. Out of the 450 pounds, 400 pounds are all muscle. At the end, there will definitely be a conflict with Jin Bing. After only a moment, Penguin made up his mind. He said directly, Erica's boyfriend's law firm is open every afternoon. You send a few people to hold him back. I want to meet her in the afternoon. The bodyguard nodded and went down to make arrangements. In the downstairs room, Bullseye at the moment, who should be sleeping soundly, is standing by the window. Although there was still a hint of drunkenness in the eyes, it was almost dissipating. This penguin is really a bit difficult to fool, but it should be regarded as being fooled. It depends on what the penguin will make in the afternoon. While Bullseye was talking, he was staring at the building to the north. That's the tallest building in Hell's Kitchen, and it's also where Jinbin is located. 
From Bullseye's point of view, it doesn't really matter that Kim betrayed him, what matters is money. Those shining dollars can buy everything. And Bullseye has decided to follow Penguin from the moment he heard that the money given by Penguin is almost three times that of Jinbin. Whether Penguin let him hear it on purpose, or really accidentally let him hear it. Does it matter? It doesn't matter at all. Taking a deep breath, Bullseye took out a note and put it on the coffee table. On the coffee table was Bullseye's personal phone number. This also means that from this moment on, Penguin can give Bullseye tasks through this phone, as long as the money is in place, no matter what you do, it will not be a problem. Putting down the note, Bullseye left the bar and headed in the direction of Erica's house. His purpose of coming to the bar has been achieved, so naturally there is no need to stay in the bar. As for Erica, Bullseye wants her to know how dangerous it is to snatch food from a tiger's mouth. Matt and Erica weren't considered rich, they made just enough to live in New York. Although both of them are different from ordinary people, their life in New York is not as smooth as they imagined. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, Matt got up from the bed, picked up the blind stick standing beside the bed and left the house. Seeing Matt leave, Erica turned over and got off the bed. In less than a minute, the casual and beautiful home clothes were replaced by black tights. Also fastened to his waist was a Bronte pistol capable of firing eight rounds. Erica pulled out her phone. The first message on the phone was sent to him by a stranger at noon. Open black lens bracket I know you are working for Jin Bin now, but it seems that he doesn't give you much money. If you have an idea, maybe you can chat with me, and if we can reach an agreement, I can give you three times. Close black lens bracket. Erica sat on the sofa and waited quietly. Not long after, there was a knock on the door. Erica didn't answer the door. The frequency of knocking outside the door is getting higher and higher, and the sound of knocking on the door is also getting louder. Erica walked up to the second floor and glanced over the window. It's him. Erica narrowed her eyes. Erica naturally recognized this person. As Jin Bin's financial planner, all of Jin Bin's nightclubs, bars, and nightclubs are now being managed by the penguin in front of him. Erica also heard that Kim donated 5% of the income from the place he manages to the penguins. But if it's penguin, he shouldn't dare to do it in full view. Thinking of this, Erica no longer hesitates. Jumped directly from the window on the second floor. With the sound of a landing, penguin's four bodyguards immediately pointed their guns at Erica. The penguin waved his hand, and then a smile appeared on his face. Erica, this should be the first time we've spoken. Erica nodded expressionlessly. You sent me that text message. Penguin nodded. Definitely. Jin Bing gave me 800,000 US dollars for one task. If it is three times, then my one-time task reward will be 2.14 million US dollars. Are you sure you can give me so much at one time? Erica was skeptical about it. The penguin didn't respond to Erica's words, and took out his phone directly to enter a few numbers. Erica's phone vibrated. Bank of New York, you deposited $100,000 in our bank at 2.50 p.m. Regardless of whether our conversation went well or not today, the US$100,000 will be regarded as your reward for our conversation. Do you think I can afford you now? Penguin returned the question to Erica. Erica nodded again and again, but she still couldn't believe that $100,000 was just like this. Why? Erica asked involuntarily. Because you are worth the price. The penguin said decisively, with a firm tone. Erica couldn't help but blushed a little, but it faded away quickly. It has to be said that penguin's trick really made Erica raise penguin's favor several levels at once. Come in and sit down. I'll give you some snacks, and then talk while eating. Erica took the initiative to open the door to get out of the way. Penguin also walked in unceremoniously. Several bodyguards were about to follow in, but the penguin said, you just watch outside the door, and if anyone comes, let me know as soon as possible. The bodyguards nodded in understanding. Matt and Erica's room is a mess. Since Mark is blind and Erica is a killer, neither of them has the habit of tidying up their rooms. Erica was used to not tidying her room, so naturally she didn't care at all. She glanced around and saw that there seemed to be no place to sit. So Erica casually threw the clothes on the coffee table into her room, and by the way, also threw the clothes on the sofa that had been there for a long time in the room, and finally freed up a place to sit. 
Sit down. I'll go to the kitchen and cut some fruit. After speaking, Erica walked towards the kitchen. The penguin quickly said, You don't need to be so polite. I just want to ask you a few questions today. Fine. Erica walked into the kitchen, took out a few apples and pears, cut them up and put them on the coffee table, and sat down opposite the penguin, showing a very relaxed posture. What do you want to ask, for the sake of $100,000, as long as I can answer you, I will know everything, and I will say everything. Penguin leaned forward slightly, then stared into Erica's eyes and asked, how did you get in touch with Jen? Killer website. Erica said without any hesitation. Killer website. Penguin was stunned for a moment. Erica nodded definitely. That's right, because Bullseye was hospitalized and no one helped him to kill, so he posted a mission on the killer website, and the reward for the mission was 800,000 US dollars. After I finished the task, Jin Bing proposed to meet me, and then we got to know each other. Penguin looked into Erica's eyes and came to a conclusion, it was the truth. Penguin didn't expect Jin Bing to have such a big heart, so he directly searched for someone from the killer website. Second thing, how many things have you done to help Jin? Only one. Penguin nodded, then looked away. Last question, how many secrets do you know about Jin Bin? Secret. Erica lowered her head and thought hard. I only met Jin Bin twice in total. The first time was when I went to Jin Bin's office to hand in the task, and the second time was when I went to withdraw money. I knew what's Jin Bin's secret. Okay, I'm fine. It's that simple. Erica couldn't believe it. Penguin spent $100,000 just to buy her a few questions. This question is too valuable. Erica smiled a little embarrassedly. Hee hee, why don't you ask me a few more questions? Otherwise, I always feel that the money is not secure. Penguin shook his head. I can't take back what I say. But I do have one more question for you. Go ahead. I want you to be my undercover agent, lurking beside Jin Bin, do you think it's okay? The penguin tried to make a fool of himself, and finally revealed the ultimate purpose of coming here. Undercover. Erica fell silent. Jin is not the underground emperor of New York, and it is an extremely dangerous act to fight against him. Before I answer your question, I also have a question for you. You say. Penguin patted the umbrella beside him. Why do you want me to be undercover by Jin Bin's side? The penguin's expression was unusually frenzied. Because I want to replace it. That's Jin Bin. Do you know how much I earned this month? A full 15 million dollars. As long as I can replace Jin Bin, I can earn more money. So that's the case, no wonder. You let me think for a while. Erica began to weigh the pros and cons. But after thinking about it, Penguin has been told everything to himself, where is he asking himself? This is completely forcing yourself to submit. So Erica said in a low tone, Penguin, I'm afraid you have thought of this from the beginning. First, you gave me $100,000 without saying a word, and then let me relax my vigilance towards you step by step. In the end, he threw a fatal blow. It was a good strategy to make me your subordinate for only $100,000. It has reached this point, and there is no point in continuing to hide. So the penguin smiled and said, I really think so. After a pause, the penguin then said, But don't get me wrong, since you are going to be my undercover agent, I will not treat you badly. Every time you complete a task in Jin Bin, I can give you that that is to say, your last task reward was 800,000 US dollars, and I will give you 2.4 million US dollars here. Hearing this, Erica gasped. This kind of treatment, even if you say it at the beginning, I can't refuse it. According to Penguin, Erica performs a mission every two months on average. Just one mission can get you three million dollars. This money is enough for them to buy a better house in New York. But I'm always safer that way, aren't I? Penguin smiled and said. Since my goal has been achieved, then I will go first. After speaking, the penguin left Erica's house, and Erica saw the penguin leaving, jumping up and down happily on the bed by herself. Let's go. The penguin walked out of the gate, looked at the bodyguards who were standing guard and said, Erica will be on our side from now on, let's go back first. The bodyguards surrounded the penguin and walked outside. Just as he was about to get in the car, a figure suddenly jumped down from the second floor. If I join you too, go to Bijin and go undercover there, can I have the treatment of Erica? Welcome. 
Penguin held out his hand. Bullseye froze for a moment, then reached out and shook Penguin's hand. But before I pretend to be you, I have to teach her a lesson. My money is not so easy to grab. Please do what you want, as long as it doesn't destroy our unity. Bullseye nodded, then disappeared in front of Penguin. Penguin suddenly laughed out loud as he watched the back of Bullseye disappear. The other side of Hell's Kitchen. Lawyer for the Blind. Matt was speaking seriously about the laws of New York to the gang members who surrounded the law firm. All the gangsters were about to knock their heads to the ground. Matt is also very helpless. He didn't know why so many gang members came to him, a blind lawyer, for advice today. Maybe conscience found out. See that you are blind and want to help. Matt shook his head quickly, throwing out the terrible thoughts in his mind. What a joke. How could these gangsters have a conscience? But since he came here to give him money, Matt must try his best to speak. So after speaking in this way, Matt talked for more than two hours, and the gang members lay down on the ground to sleep. Obviously, they are not the material for reading. While Matt was talking, a gang member's phone rang suddenly. Huh, whose phone is ringing? Oh, it's mine. He picked up the phone, then nodded and said a few words. Yes, I understand. Then hung up the phone. The gang member then handed Matt $1,000. Looking at the gang members lying down, the gangster who answered the phone just now sighed, and then kicked the sleeping man's leg. Hurry up, get up quickly, our task for today is completed. Only then did the gang members get up sleepily. The leader smiled at Matt with some embarrassment. I'm sorry, teacher. I made you laugh. We'll come back tomorrow to listen to the lecture. Matt touched the bill and said, it's $400 for two hours, and you paid too much. Not too much, not too much, this is what our boss ordered, and we will come to you to study every day from now on. Matt froze for a moment, then collected the money. Then thank you boss for me. Now that this has been said, what else can Matt say, he can only put away all the $1,000. At the same time, he also felt a little funny. Who would have thought that as a superhero, one day he would say thank you to a group of gangsters. This world is really full of drama everywhere. The gangsters left. Matt couldn't help but smile on his face. Because this is Hell's Kitchen, Matt used to earn more than $100 a day at most, and sometimes less than $100. But today, those gangsters suddenly gave themselves money. Putting the money in the pocket of his coat, Matt closed the door with a smile on his face, and then walked towards home. And the bullseye of at the moment is completely in a state of bewilderment right now. Who I am? Where am I? What just happened? Bullseye was neatly dressed, and there was no sign of a fight on his body. Back to half an hour ago, Bullseye aggressively knocked on Erica's door, and Erica from at the moment was sitting on the bed and giggling. Seeing the bullseye, Erica wanted to shoot first, but then she thought of something and put her hand down. Bullseye watched Erica's movements, and then asked with a puzzled look, aren't you going to do it? Erica shook her head, you started spying on me two hours ago, and you left here for a while after the penguin left, so you must belong to the penguin. Bullseye narrowed his eyes and said coldly, that's right, but you stole my money. I stole your money. Erica pissed let out a laugh, and the picture flashed across her mind. Are you from Jin Bin? Jin Bin discovered that I was in collusion with the penguin. Erica's voice suddenly became cold, and the surrounding voices also dropped several times. It used to be, but not now. Bullseye shook his head. You give me the 800,000 yuan, and the grievances between the two of us will be wiped out. Erica shook her head without hesitation. Why? That should have been my money, and I should have killed that person. When he thought of losing so much money, his heart felt bleeding. Erica rolled her eyes. Please, don't you think you are being unreasonable? Then let me ask you, since you said you deserved the money, what did you pay for it? Killed that is it a New York congressman? Or did you assist my investigation from the sidelines? Or in fact, the New York congressman is not dead, but someone else killed him, and that person is you. I, Bullseye wanted to speak, but Erica spoke mercilessly. And you were in prison at the time, Jin Bing asked me to do this. Even if you want the money, you should be looking for Jin Bing, not me. You, what are you looking for me for? Go slowly, don't send me off. After finishing speaking, Erica closed the door with a loud, slap, without any politeness. 
Erika's few words stunned Bullseye, who was not very good at first, and was stunned for half an hour. It took a long time before Bullseye came to his senses, and then walked in another direction step by step. Bullseye. Halfway through, Matt and Bullseye just happened to meet each other. Matt immediately took a fighting stance, but Bullseye walked past him as if he didn't see him, and said in his mouth, I want her. Or I want gold. Does this money really have something to do with me? Who should I ask for it? Matt also looked at Bullseye, who was going further and further away, without making a move. What the hell is going on today? He also doesn't remember that today is April Fool's Day. Forget about those gangsters, how come the bullseye that was inseparable from me a few days ago has become this kind of virtue? Shaking his head, Matt felt that he couldn't think of an answer, so he could only temporarily suppress the doubts in his heart and returned home. Back home, Erica gave Matt a big hug as usual. Matt felt keenly that Erica was very excited today, and she even lost some strength in holding him. Anything happy? Erica nodded, but immediately shook her head again. His boyfriend has always been a very righteous person, so she must not tell him about it. Thinking of this, Erica smiled. You came back so early today, I'm definitely happy. Hearing Erica's silvery laughter, Matt grinned happily when he thought of the $1,000 he earned today. A Hydra base in Manhattan, New York. Joker, with heavy makeup on his face, is doing push-ups humming. Things to do tonight are a bit strenuous, and Joker is fully warming up for himself. There are also two people beside Joker, one white and one black. Both of them were Joker's team members at the beginning, but they didn't have today's time when they came in again. The two were brainwashed by Joker, and then became avid fans of Joker. It can be said that even if Joker tells them to die now, they will definitely shoot themselves in the head without any hesitation. This is Joker's ability to spread terror, even Hydra, which has a very strong brainwashing ability, can't compare with Joker. The two were just like the group of lunatics in Arkham Asylum back then, only Joker followed suit. After finishing a round of warm-up, Joker picked up the clothes on his body and wiped his sweat, and then asked the white man, Oren, are you ready for the firework I asked you to prepare for tonight's feast? Oren raised his head, eyes full of enthusiasm, definitely ready, my master. I have let the following agents place them in all corners of New York, I can guarantee that after tonight, your name will be it will light up all of New York. Ha 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 ha. Joker burst out laughing suddenly, his voice was high-pitched and crazy, and it was extraordinarily harsh in this terrifying training room. But Eren and another black man were full of excitement. It is their supreme honor to devote themselves to Joker. Homeland Strategic Defense Offensive and Logistics Support Agency. Deputy Chief's Office. An old man with white hair and a middle-aged bald white man sat opposite each other. That old man with white hair is Pierce. And that bald-headed white man is currently the highest level agent in HYDRA's Homeland Strategic Defense Attack and Logistics Support Bureau except for Pierce, a level 8 agent. It's the same level as Nick Fury's Filson, who runs business outside all day. And who would have thought that Hydra, which Nick Fury thought was wiped out by Captain America during World War II, has always existed, not only that, but also became the deputy director in power second only to Nick Fury. Now Nick Fury has almost monopolized all the power. Only he and his Hill agent have the power to directly contact the people above, and almost everyone in our entire Hydra is excluded. Is there any way you can do it? Pierce sighed, then looked at the bald man. Even if you can't do it, how can I do it? The bald man also sighed. They are all the most loyal supporters of Hydra, and now the decline of Hydra is not what they want to see. Although Pierce has made unremitting efforts over the years, he has corrupted a large part of the low-level agents in the Homeland Strategic Defense Attack and Logistic Support Agency. But these seem to be of no use. Now Hydra urgently needs fresh blood to replenish itself. By the way, didn't a common man code named Joker join us last month? The bald man nodded, and then asked. It seems that there is such a person, I put him and one of our agent teams together for training. Confused. You should have read Joker's information at the time, right? Pierce said with hatred. The bald man nodded suspiciously. I did look at Joker's profile, but he was just lucky. Good luck. Have you seen any lucky common people who can play around with our 7th level agent? And that person is not a common 7th level agent. 
but an agent who has received rigorous training in the Red Room. Pierce snorted coldly. I've also read the information about this Joker. He's definitely not just a level 5 danger. I didn't expect Nick Fury to be blind sometimes. Pierce, who has lived for most of his life and has access to almost all confidential things, naturally knows about the Red House. The Red House was specially used to train agents before that big country was disintegrated. They mainly focus on training female agents, and all the women there have undergone inhumane training before they can come out to perform tasks. And Black Widow is one of the best. Can such a person who has been cautious all his life be careless? Pierce couldn't believe it. And Pierce once asked someone to do a psychic profile for Joker, but there was no result at all. The most elite experts in the entire United States have no way to get even a little bit of information on Joker. Pierce took a deep breath, thought carefully for a while, and then said to the bald agent on the opposite side, ask if Joker has done anything recently, we can fully cooperate with him. Although the bald agent didn't know why Pierce valued the Joker so much, he still picked up the phone and dialed the number of a fifth-level agent, Moren, who was also the white guy who was in a group with Joker. Training Room Originally, Moren and the black man were concentrating on listening to the evening plan, but a phone call came in suddenly. Moren frowned and took out his phone, then looked at the caller on it. Boss, it's a bald agent. The code name of the bald agent is Bald, but unlike Nick Fury, he is a white man. Joker's eloquent plan was also forced to stop, he glanced at the phone, and then said to Ren, go ahead, let's see what this bald agent wants to do. Ren nodded, connected the phone, and turned on the speakerphone. Ren agent, I remember that Joker was assigned to your group. How is his situation now? Ren looked at Joker, as if asking how to answer this question. Joker laughed, he he he, then walked to the phone and picked it up. Bald agent, what do you want me to do? Joker. Listening to the sharp voice in the phone, the bald agent couldn't help shivering, and at the same time looked at Pierce in disbelief. Pierce was right. Moren was originally a supporter of their Hydra, but in just one month, Moren has directly become Joker's subordinate. The bald agent suddenly felt a little scared. Anyone who enters their Hydra has undergone brainwashing. Joker is naturally no exception. The person responsible for brainwashing Joker was Aren and another member of their team, but unexpectedly, the brainwashing failed, and even Aren became a Joker. Seeing the bald agent's reaction, Pierce sighed, and then took the bald agent's call. Joker, I'm Pierce, head of HYDRA's Strategic Homeland Defense Logistics and Attack Division. Hey, I'm so honored that a big shot like you would call a humble person like me. Joker let out a creepy laugh. You seriously injured Black Widow is a common, how could you be an insignificant person? Pierce made a haha, -ha, and then continued, My subordinates found that you have recently bought a lot of saltpeter, gunpowder, and fuses. What are you going to do? Is there anything Hydra can do for you? Definitely, I did have a problem that caused me quite a headache. Joker spoke immediately. I'm going to invite people from all over New York to watch a grand firework. There should be no problem but I can't get the firework at the Statue of Liberty. Can you help me think of a way? Joker's voice came. The Statue of Liberty. No problem, I can let the agent sneak right in. That's no problem, happy cooperation. By the way, remember to stand in front of your window tonight, and wait until 12 o'clock exactly, you will see the biggest firework show of this century. After speaking, Joker hung up the phone. And after Pierce put down the phone, the bald agent asked, are we really going to help Joker? Now Ren and the others have become Joker's people. Pierce, you also know HYDRA's brainwashing method, which can keep you in that situation. Sober, and even fooled our people, do you really think it's okay to cooperate with him? Pierce didn't answer the bald agent's words immediately, but lowered his head and began to think. Ren and those people are corrupted for sure, and he knew it from the moment Pierce asked those psychic profilers to profile Joker's psychology. Joker is a disordered, paranoid, crazy, chaotic person. But while possessing these qualities, Joker is also an extremely calm person, and everything he does has a strong purpose. It was a quality Pierce had only seen in one person over the years. Nick Fury is the current director. Now that Hydra is in decline, if Joker can be caught, maybe he can really use this to return to the top. Maybe Ren is just an exception. 
He stayed with Joker for a month. We just need to tell our agents to be careful, and each person should not be in contact with Joker for more than five days. Every five days, we will change a group of people. Joker's side, in this case, wouldn't this problem be solved perfectly? Pierce spoke. The reason why it is five days is because HYDRA's brainwashing only takes seven days. In order to prevent the agent from being brainwashed, they even shortened the time for the agent to come into contact with the Joker. The two did not realize at all how dangerous it was to do so. The reason why Hydra can have a steady stream of people joining is because of their powerful and unique brainwashing methods. Most of the people who can be brainwashed are those with weak spirits. They can be brainwashed by Hydra, and naturally they can also be brainwashed by Joker. And Joker has more brainwashing methods than Hydra advanced. Otherwise, the group of lunatics in Arkham Asylum would not follow Joker one by one. The bald agent nodded, then I'll let the agent under me get in touch with Joker. Today's conversation with Joker should be a question Joker gave us. As long as we can complete the question, then we have cooperation with Joker, possible. Pierce nodded. On the other side, Joker smiled happily after hanging up the phone. Ha 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 ha. It's almost evening now. New York nightlife is just getting started. In the drunken New York, the office workers took off the suits and leather shoes they had been wearing all day, put on simple short sleeves and shorts, took to the streets one by one, and began to release their charm towards New York. And in an unknown dark corner, armed agents wearing Joker masks are carrying boxes of fireworks with Joker patterns on their backs, waiting for the final moment. New work time. This is the most crowded place in New York at night. As a country with an open culture, Times Square has all kinds of people, so a few people wearing Joker masks will definitely not attract everyone's attention, even if each of them has a big bag on their back. Firework. When it was 7 o'clock in the evening, the sun in the sky cast its last ray of light, and the lights of the entire Times Square were also lit up. A few people wearing Joker masks in Times Square did not have the slightest hesitation, and put down the backpacks in their hands in unison, revealing the firework inside. Put the firework on the ground and light the fuse with a lighter. The flames jumped out with a swoosh. Boom. A dull voice sounded in the center of Times Square. Firework jumped out and appeared above Times Square. As soon as everyone looked up, they could see the word Joker and firework surrounding Times Square. Just at this moment, a picture appeared on the big screen in the center of Times Square. The Joker appears on the largest screen in the middle. Today, I would like to invite people from all over New York to watch the biggest firework show of this century at the Statue of Liberty. At 12 o'clock in the evening, I will see you all. After speaking, the Joker on the screen became the original advertisement. Several people wearing Joker masks in Times Square also shouted loudly, Joker hail. Joker hail. This sentence is like magic, and more and more people have joined the team called Joker Hale. Some gangsters on the street saw so many people joining in the fun, so they joined this huge team with the attitude that there was nothing to do now anyway. What are you guys doing? Don't you know? Joker put several fireworks in Times Square just now, and he also said that he is going to put on the biggest firework show of this century at the Statue of Liberty today. We are going to the Statue of Liberty. Ah. It's more than 20 kilometers away from here. It's only more than 20 kilometers. There are still 5 hours before the opening of the firework, and we can walk from here. Really? Then I'm going to see it too. This scene happened in all major areas of New York. Whether you are an elite white-collar worker in Manhattan or a street gangster in Hell's Kitchen. Whether you are a handsome gentleman in a suit during the day, or an obedient student with excellent grades in school. And it doesn't matter if you're a criminal, or the NYPD. All the people walk towards the Statue of Liberty under the leadership of the caring people. Even people from the next city drove over from the next city when they heard the news. And the helicarrier of at the moment. All the top executives of the Homeland Strategic Defense Attack and Logistics Support Agency were gathered in a conference room on the aircraft carrier. There was only one thing they focused on discussing this time, Joker. How bad. I was already thinking about where to sleep at night, and suddenly someone told me that Joker is going to have a big explosion at the Statue of Liberty. Pierce pretended to be about to go home, and spoke first in a low voice. Pierce, get serious. 
We have 4 hours and 50 minutes until the Joker detonates the Statue of Liberty, and we have no time to waste. Pierce curled his lip, not continuing to confront Nick Fury. Hill, take out the data collected by our agent. Hill, who was seated, nodded. He was originally the minister of the executive department, so he was naturally qualified to sit in this position. A list appeared in front of everyone. The above is the sales volume of all firework vendors in the past month. After comparison, the firework sales in New York last month surged by 5,000% compared to two months ago, and more than 80% of the fireworks in New York have been bought. And the person who bought these fireworks can only be Joker. Combined take what Joker said in Times Square tonight. We have reason to suspect that Joker may want to blow up the Statue of Liberty. Maybe Joker just wanted to put on a firework for us. One of them curled his lips, then looked at the information in front of him and said with some disdain. This is a level 7 agent, who is from Hydra. Is your mind filled with poop? More than 80% of the firework in New York, if used properly, can create a weapon that can destroy an entire district. And now because of Joker's words, almost everyone who saw that screen is heading towards the Statue of Liberty. If Joker really does this, and he succeeds, then maybe many places in New York will directly become a no man's land. Nick Fury pointed at the 7th level agent's head and cursed. How can there be such an idiot in our bureau? Who promoted this guy? Tell him to get out now. The 7th level agent looked at Pierce, and Pierce shook his head. So the 7th level agent had no choice but to leave the meeting room unwillingly. Nick Fury's dark complexion finally looked better. I don't care what conflicts we had before. Now, I only have one request for you. Don't fight among yourself. If you dare to fight among yourself at this time, get out of here now. Having said that, Nick Fury glanced at Pierce who lowered his head. From now on, you have only one purpose, find out the purpose of Joker, if Joker really turned those fireworks into explosives, find and destroy them. Also, if any of you encounter the Joker, Without the slightest hesitation in Nick Fury's voice, he said decisively, I allow you to shoot and kill. Joker no longer has any moral values in his heart. What he is doing now is to fight with all of his human beings again. Enemy. Now increase the danger level of Joker to 8. Nick Fury's eyes were full of killing intent. In his view, the existence of the Homeland Strategic Defense Security and Logistics Support Agency is to protect human beings. They have been protecting the Earth since Hydra during World War II. Anything that might threaten humans will die. Outside the conference room. A group of advanced agents are on standby. Natasha Romanoff was discharged from the hospital more than 10 days ago, and now she only has a mild concussion in her head. As soon as she heard that Joker was going to do something again, she hurried over from the hospital. Also eager is Hawkeye. Hawkeye specially prepared a few special bows and arrows today. The bows and arrows are coated with some poisons that can enhance the human body's senses. If they are shot by such bows and arrows, the pain will be magnified countless times. Hawkeye turned his head and looked at the slightly nervous Natasha Romanoff, with tenderness in his eyes. Natasha Romanoff, the Joker is just a common, as long as we're careful we'll be fine. Seeing that Natasha Romanoff was so nervous, Hawkeye couldn't help but speak. Natasha Romanoff shook her head. Don't take it lightly, Linton. At the beginning, I actually thought it was just me taking it lightly. But the more I thought about it later, the more I felt something was wrong. Logically speaking, it is absolutely impossible for me to make such a low-level mistake, but I just committed a crime. Hawkeye lowered his head, not taking Natasha Romanoff's words. Obviously, in his perception, he just needs to be a little careful when dealing with common people like Joker. Natasha Romanoff is just a bit too nervous right now because of a mistake. At this time, another 7th level agent of the action team said, Black Widow, your injuries are not fully healed yet, and we are already very large to deal with common people like Joker, so there is no need to bring injured. Natasha Romanoff looked back at the 7th level agent who spoke. I'm just here to save you. The more careless you are now, the more serious the casualties may be. Alas, the seventh level agent snorted disdainfully. Every seventh level agent has been cultivated by the flames of war, and everyone present has read Joker's information, but he is just a slightly clever common. So most of the agents present are treating this mission with a contemptuous attitude. 
Even many of the agents have complaints. A mere common man. Is it worth their fuss? Seeing their attitudes like this, Natasha Romanoff shook her head helplessly, then continued to close her eyes and meditate. There's going to be a hell of a fight tonight, and Joker's definitely not the only one inside the Statue of Liberty. Natasha Romanoff has never been idle in the hospital. She dug deep into Joker's actions when he first appeared, and found a terrible thing. The Joker blew up the Church of St. Lazorin, and under poorly prepared conditions. Because the Joker had just appeared in Hell's Kitchen for a day, and then he took a few unnamed gangsters from Hell's Kitchen to rob the Bank of Manhattan, and even used the internal strife among the gangsters to make those gangsters kill each other. In the end, a total of six people went to rob the Manhattan Bank, and only Joker left safely. Joker's second action was because when he was in Manhattan, the middle-aged man scolded Joker, you only deserve to live under my feet. It was because of this sentence that Joker broke into the largest church in New York single-handedly, and then let the middle-aged man die on the cross. In a sense, Joker really makes the words of middle-aged men come true. And there is a deeper reason for Joker to set the location of the murder at the Church of St. Lazorin. That middle-aged man was a Christian. Finally, Natasha Romanoff summed up several characteristics of Joker. Extremely smart, very good at using people's hearts, not only crazy but also extremely antisocial personality. Natasha Romanoff didn't know why Joker started to attack without being fully prepared, like someone was urging him behind his back. But this time is different. There was no news from Joker for a whole month. Then as soon as Joker appeared, he announced to the whole New York people in a high-profile manner that he would put on the biggest fireworks show of this century in New York. Joker has almost bought out all the fireworks in New York. Natasha Romanoff has no idea whether to make bombs or simply make fireworks. New York nights are usually packed with people, but today was different. Even in a place like Times Square, you can only see a few uninformed elderly people. Even Times Square is like this, let alone anywhere else. As early as the first time the news appeared, all the people in the New York Police Department drove to the Statue of Liberty to control it, but it seemed that they came a little too late. They can't even squeeze in. In desperation, people from the New York Police Department could only contact the military stationed in New York. It wasn't until the army arrived that the scene here was a little bit under control. At present, the entire surrounding area of the Statue of Liberty is full of people, and even the Liberty Street next to it is already overcrowded. There are even people who are constantly coming from afar. There are many people shouting in their mouths, Joker hail. Inside the cordon, how long can our cordon last? A senior colonel of the Marine Corps asked. If Tony Stark were here, he would definitely find that the person here was actually his good friend Rhodes. Where are those people in the Homeland Strategy Bureau? Don't those guys claim to protect the peace of the earth? Why don't they come here? We've arrived, we're in the underground pipeline now. A voice suddenly came from the headset. How should we cooperate with you? You just need to manage the crowd outside, and it's better to let them back another 200 meters. We are not sure how many bombs Joker planted inside the Statue of Liberty. Rhodes sighed. This is impossible. The Statue of Liberty and the two adjacent blocks are already overcrowded. We also spent a lot of effort to clear the 50-meter vacant area and establish a cordon. Now there may be a stampede here at any time, so we can't do this. Okay, if there is any other news later, I will continue to talk to you. After speaking, the voice in the headset disappeared. There was a diddy -di sound from Rhodes' headset, indicating that the call had been hung up. Listening to the voice in the headset, Rhodes smiled wryly inside as he looked at the packed crowd, and turned his gaze to the Statue of Liberty. Now, they don't know anything about it except that their opponent is the Joker. I don't know how many bombs Joker has planted, how many people are on the other side, and what weapons are used on the other side. It can be said that they are now in a state of black eyes. Before, whether it was the New York Police Department or the Marine Corps, many people went into the Statue of Liberty, but none of them came out. Everyone fell silent after entering. It is precisely because of this that they dare not continue to act rashly now. Underground, the agents of the action group led by Hill, the minister of the executive department, are advancing cautiously. They moved forward very cautiously, because they had just walked a total of 200 meters and found three bombs. 
and the total weight of these three bombs is more than 100 kilograms. Joker, what exactly do you want to do? Nick Fury, who was far away in S.H.I.E.L.D., turned blue when he heard the news. That is a bomb with a total weight of more than 100 kilograms. Now almost all the people in New York are concentrated there. If the bomb really explodes, the number of casualties is definitely an unacceptable number. Nick Fury clutched an ancient communicator tightly in his hand. This is the only communication method left to him by Wonder Woman, and it can only be used when the survival of the Earth is really at stake. Nick Fury's hands trembled slightly, and he put the communicator back into his pocket. Now I can handle it, and I can't let her come back now. After all this was done, Nick Fury continued to sit on the main seat with a gloomy face, staring at the video coming back from the camera on the big screen. Joker is simply crazy. He planted so many bombs in the sewer, what the hell is he trying to do? Even Pierce couldn't help breaking out in a cold sweat looking at the footage from the camera. If these bombs were not discovered and dismantled, but were detonated by Joker, then the number of casualties is definitely a number that no one can bear, and even everyone present here will definitely take the blame and resign because of this matter. Sent to a military court. The current situation has far exceeded our ability scope, and our agent manpower is still too small. Pierce stood up suddenly, and then said, in view of this situation, I propose that the military send the Marine Corps to cooperate with our operations. No one in the room knew better than Pierce how crazy the Joker really was. Even Pierce helped Joker put 200 kilograms of TNT bombs and countless fireworks into the Statue of Liberty. That's right, Joker asked Pierce's agent to ship a lot of firework into it. I agree, I agree, I agree, Fury saw that so many people agreed, so he said decisively, then contact the military and let them search for bombs in all sewers within a diameter of 2 kilometers. This is the exit, so be careful in groups of two, there may be people up there. Hill gestured to the two agents behind him, telling them to go up first. The agent nodded and climbed up the ladder. The eyes of the others were also fixed on it. The two climbed to the top, and just opened the manhole cover, two bullets hit the heads of the two agents directly. The two agents were shot through their heads in an instant and fell from above. Hidden, there are enemies above. Hill yelled, and quickly backed away. At the same time, two grenades were thrown from above. Lie down. After all the agents were lying down, the grenade exploded, and several more agents were directly injured. Hawkeye watched the gap between the explosion of the grenade and stood up, then quickly shot two blasting arrows towards the manhole cover, and then threw two smoke bombs on it. Hurry up and rush up with the blasting shield. Boom. After a loud noise, Hawkeye spoke loudly to the agents. The agents of shield quickly raised the military shield, put it on their heads, and got out under the cover of smoke bombs. Sir, the people above have already fled, and this place is safe. After hearing the news from the agents above, Hill ordered the agents to go up. All the agents were almost up there, Hill turned his head and saw Natasha Romanoff still standing there. Natasha Romanoff agent, what are you doing? Executing orders. Hill said coldly. Hill agent, don't you think it's a little strange? Natasha Romanoff said with a strange face. Strange. Where's the weirdness? Isn't Joker's people just fighting guerrilla warfare? Yeah, that's the weirdness here. If I were Joker, if I put people here, I definitely wouldn't just let them drop two grenades and leave. Not good. Hearing Natasha Romanoff's words, Hill's expression also changed. She didn't expect to be here. Get them back quickly. Just as Hill gave the order, there was the sound of a gun battle outside. Hill agent, it's not good. The enemy has an ambush. Can you hold on? No problem for the time being, but the enemy's firepower is very fierce, and it may not be realistic to break through. Hill glanced at Natasha Romanoff, and then gave an order to the people outside. Retreat first, let's continue to find another place to go out. Yes. Brothers, withdraw to the sewer. Hearing the chaotic footsteps in the headset, Hill sighed and asked, Do you know Joker? Natasha Romanoff shook her head. I don't really understand. Hill showed a disappointed expression. But Natasha Romanoff changed the subject and said, But I've been studying Joker since I woke up in the ward. Hill nodded emphatically. I still know too little about Joker. From now on, I will give you the position of command. Natasha Romanoff nodded. 
Now there are two heavy machine guns standing there. After all the agents came back, Hawkeye said with a heavy face. In just one confrontation, they killed 17 agents. These 17 agents don't know how much it will cost to train them. It's not realistic to break through here. Natasha Romanoff, what do we do next? Natasha Romanoff was silent for a moment, then looked up. Joker is a very cunning criminal. I guess all the places that can go out have been guarded by Joker. Then what should we do? Now we can only wait for the bomb to explode here. Since the Joker blocked all the exits, let's make an exit ourselves. Natasha Romanoff pointed to it, and then spoke. Are you crazy? Even the thinnest part here is a full three meters thick. That's reinforced concrete, not sand. Hill opened his mouth in disbelief. Then do you have any other options now? Natasha Romanoff looked at Hill calmly and said. Hill was silent, lowered his head and ordered to the agent. Start digging, I want you to dig a passage within two hours, so that we may have a chance to save it. Yes. While Hill and his group of agents were digging towards it in full swing, the Joker in the house at the eyes of the Statue of Liberty was a completely different scene. He was wearing a clean purple suit, holding a goblet full of porcini wine in his hand, and a smile on his lips. That smile is mild on any commoner these days, except Joker. Under the blessing of the two scars separated by the sharp blade at the corners of Joker's mouth, this smile looks so evil and terrifying. It's like the deepest darkness. Behind the Joker, there is a colorful firework, and there is even a huge amount of TNT explosive pack. Eren, where are our dear agents now? Joker suddenly turned his head to look at Eren and said. Eren said a few words into the headset, and after a reply came from the headset, he replied, now they have fought with the people we arranged outside the sewer pipes, and they are going to dig a tunnel by themselves, and I need to go are you looking for someone to stop them? Joker turned his head to the pile of fireworks, and then said, See. This is a gift I prepared for them. Joker has a regretful expression. It would be a shame if no one came to enjoy this firework show with me. So instead of blocking them, let them come up. Then I'll tell them right away. After speaking, Eren was about to leave. But Joker seemed to suddenly remember something, and then looked at Eren. I remember that there seemed to be a woman who had a conflict with me in that church before, and I was almost caught by her. Is he here this time? Eren nodded. Black Widow is also here, and he is now in the team that dug the tunnel. Not only that, Black Widow is also the commander of that team. That would be the best. Joker let out a piercing laugh. Is there anyone in that team this time who has something to do with Black Widow? Eren said without any hesitation, there is a 7th level agent code named Hawkeye. The information of the agents has long been deeply engraved in Eren's mind. Are they on good terms? Fine. Eren nodded. Then you guys give me a chance to knock Hawkeye over here and bring me here. Let Natasha Romanoff come over in the last 10 minutes. She chose to save her life last time. I don't know how she will choose this time. Ha 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 ha. Yes. Eren left, and Joker took another sip of the red wine in the glass, looking out at the already crowded street, waiting for the last moment. About three blocks from the Statue of Liberty block. In a dark corner, a man wearing a red battle suit with only half of his chin showing appeared here. Daredevil. Also Erica's boyfriend, Matt Murdock, who runs a law firm for the blind. He was supposed to be on a date with Erica tonight. But Erica was temporarily unable to come. And Matt heard the report from the reporter on TV, so he decided to come over to join in the fun. But he is still watching from a distance. After all, he is not an idiot, and he also knows how much he has. Although Matt's sensory ability is indeed very strong, in the two blocks ahead, there are thousands of heavily armed soldiers. Matt didn't want to include himself in it just to join in the fun. At the same time, Matt couldn't help but be silent. Through super listening, he has fully understood the cause and effect of this matter, and he can't help feeling disgusted with the criminal named Joker, but also developed a little interest. After all, Joker is just a common. As for the Land Strategic Defense Attack and Logistics Support Bureau, there are quite a few powerful people. An agent named Phil Coulson in this so-called Human Security Bureau once invited him, but he declined. After all Matt is only a blind man. He still prefers to fight alone rather than cooperate. Just as Matt was thinking, the phone in his trouser pocket rang suddenly. 
Matt froze for a moment, who would call him at this time? But Matt picked it up anyway. Who is it? Matt asked. A voice familiar to Matt came from the other side of the phone. It was the Phil Coulson agent who had once wooed him. Mr. Murdoch, I remember your super ability is sensory ability. Yes. Great, we need your help now. Our actions are currently restricted, and our agents are trying to make a hole out. Now they are not absolutely sure that they can successfully subdue Joker, so I want you and them together. Listening to the voice of Phil Coulson agent opposite, Matt was silent for a while. I can go there, but together, I prefer to go alone. I will climb directly from the back of the Statue of Liberty. You just need to tell me where Joker is. Hearing Matt's answer, Phil Coulson couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. People in our bureau have analyzed it. If Joker wants to put firework, then the most likely place is the two rooms inside the eyes of the Statue of Liberty. But we are not sure which one. Phil Coulson paused for a moment, and then continued, maybe Joker didn't actually come, but hid in an unknown place and watched all this silently. I can only do my best, you help me get the army. After speaking, Matt hung up the phone. The back of the Statue of Liberty is backed by an artificial lake. In this case, as long as you wear clothes similar to the paint of the Statue of Liberty, you will not be discovered by Joker. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and support my channel.